you're, you're watching this video because you either don't know what microphone to get or if you want to buy an additional piece of hardware to really manage your audio levels. And I think the bigger question behind that first question would have to be what software will work best for you. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francisco. Today, I want to talk to you about choice because choice is a luxury that you and I have now as content creators as to what we're going to buy when it comes to like a microphone, capture cards, lighting, and this and that. There's a lot of choices out there. When it comes to microphones, there is a other set of choices that you have to take into consideration besides the actual mic itself. Let's pretend for a moment that you're considering buying a USB microphone for your, your content. And you got a couple of options and two of the biggest options out there right now that we're going to look at, it's not necessarily the mic itself, but the software that powers the mic and the audio management for your streams. And I'm talking about Elgato's Wavelink and Beacon's Beacon app. Let's look at some pros. Let's look at some cons. And based off my experience, let's see which one do I believe might be the best one for you. So one of the first pros about the Wavelink software from Elgato is the software stability. It is an incredibly stable piece of software. I've had little to no issues in my years of using it. Uh, the worst issue I've ever had with it is something that gets commented on my videos quite frequently is that for some reason, every now and then the program will decide to be unable to read your VST plugins, even if you scan them using the function within the program itself. If you're encountering this issue, what I did to resolve it was simply make sure that the VST plugins are installed into the same exact file where Wavelink is installed, or at least the very same exact directory. As far as stability is concerned, though, besides that, I've not had any crashes, any freezing, or any sort of abnormalities while using the software when it is up and running as it is right now. Next on the list for pros for the Wavelink is going to be VST support. So Wavelink thankfully does support VST plugins. If you're not familiar with what that is, VST plugins are plugins that you use to really drive and customize the audio quality of any given microphone that is being used and routed through Elgato Wavelink. So for example, I can do EQ for my SM7B. I can add a noise gate, noise suppression, an expander, uh, noise removal, or anything like that. Any plugins that you have downloaded onto your computer, you can have Wavelink scan for those files and it'll automatically add it in and you're able to really start to customize how your microphone sounds. Fantastic feature. One of my favorite things that Wavelink does is VST support. Third on the list for pros with the Elgato Wavelink is its ability to support up to nine different inputs. If you look at my screen here, I've got my microphone, PC audio, music programs such as Spotify, right? Browser audio, so if I'm watching YouTube videos on my browser and I'm live streaming while I'm doing that, I can control that video's volume independently of the entirety of the rest of my PC volume. Voice chat for things like Discord, sound effects like soundboards, voice mod, etc. You have a couple of different auxiliary inputs as well available to you and game as well. So the same exact thing here with game where maybe I'm playing Elden Ring on Steam, I'm streaming that through OBS and I don't wanna have my volume for the game tied to my volume for the system. I can independently control the volume of Elden Ring separately from the actual PC audio. And this is where things like the Streamlabs alerts are coming through, right? I don't want this to be super, super loud because I have to crank up the volume of the game. I can turn the system volume down so my alerts aren't like, you know, scaring anybody while still having independent control of the game's volume itself. Fourth on the list of pros for Elgato Wavelink, we're gonna talk about its ability to be integrated directly into Stream Deck. Now, as of the recording of this video, I have not purchased the Stream Deck Plus. I am strictly using the original version of the Stream Deck keypad, if you will. You're able to assign different buttons to do different things. So for example, I have a button that is assigned to switch between my monitor mix and my stream mix, which by the way, monitor mix is what you hear. Stream mix is what your audience listens to, right? So you're able to switch between the two and then you can also independently change the volume outputs for each one of those mixes. So I can change the volume levels of a microphone for my own personal mix and independently also change the volume levels of the mic for my stream mix. And the same exact thing can be done for each one of these different inputs all right here at my fingertips at the press of a button. And one of the cooler things about that is that recently in an update, Elgato added the ability to be able to adjust the step or the difference or the amount of volume that you are decreasing or increasing by down to 1% at a time, which is fantastic because prior to that, I think you could only do like two, five, 10, 20, 25, 50% at a time. And some of those steps are obviously way too big, but being able to do it at 1% at a time really gives you the creator a lot of control 
over how your volume comes out to your audience and how much of the volume you're able to get to yourself. Now, unfortunately, not all that glitters is gold, ladies and gents. We do have a couple of cons that you need to take into consideration as you're deciding potentially which microphone you're gonna go with. And one of the big cons for the Wavelink software is that you have to work with Windows sound settings in order to get this set up. So in Wavelink over here, you go to the top right corner, you hit this icon here, and it's gonna open up this uh, app volume preference uh, menu over here. In this menu, you have to go through and designate each different app that you have here into one of these different outputs right here or inputs i'm sorry and it's not incredibly difficult it's it's a little bit tedious but it's an extra step that you have to do to get everything set up whereas when we take a look at the beacon app you're going to see and i'm going to spoil it right now that one of the pros for the beacon app is that beacons app is designed to do this automatically for you not a major deal breaker but i think it's an additional step that we could have done without the next con when we're looking at the elgato wavelink is kind of a big one um it depends on what kind of streamer you are but let's pretend that you are streaming content out to twitch or to youtube or tiktok or what have you and you have copywritten music playing through your stream right now on twitch if that copywritten music makes it onto your vod right your video on demand the recording of your stream you're either going to get a copyright strike or the audio for your stream is going to get muted after that stream is over and you don't really want to deal with that because let's pretend maybe you want to export that VOD for additional pieces of content. You're going to be missing chunks of audio, like they, they will mute it all entirely. Okay. Or they might decide to, you know, alter how it monetizes, etc. So unfortunately for us, Wavelink doesn't have the ability to do what's called a VOD track, which we're going to have a look at here with Beacons app. If this had a VOD track, you would be able to tell Wavelink that, Hey, when I'm playing music through my stream, I don't want the music saved to my VOD track and it will not have any of the music on the VOD track, which now basically means you're not going to get any copyright strikes, your audio is not going to get muted, and you'll be able to use that VOD for other pieces of content if that's what you decide to do with it. And finally, for cons with the Wavelink, let's pretend that it does crash on you uh, one day, or let's pretend that you have a unique stream situation or content situation that requires you to change everything up that you got going on over here in Wavelink. There's no way to save your profile that I'm aware of right now. You cannot save what you've got set up right here right now. And then you're going to do all this work to get it set up for a whole different special stream or podcast or what have you. And then you're going to have to hope to God you remember exactly how you had things set up before that because you're going to have to manually do it all over again. If there was an ability to save profiles and be able to switch between profiles on the fly, I think that would make Wavelink damn near untouchable. But unfortunately, it doesn't have that feature that I've been able to tell and everything that I have here is up to date as of right now. It's not there. And I think that's also another pretty big miss for Wavelink. When we take a look at Beacon's app, you're going to see that again, another spoiler in the Beacon app, you're able to save your profiles. So should something happen, hopefully your profile is still saved and you're going to load the program back up and you're going to have all your settings there with a caveat though. But we'll get to that here in just a second. But that about wraps it up for Wavelink now let's go ahead and dive right into Beacon's Beacon app. In regards to pros for Beacon's Beacon app, we're going to have to talk about the Windows configuration because that was a con for Wavelink, but here in Beacon app, it is an actual pro. Beacon does not require the user to go into Windows settings and finagle with any of the app routing for what input you're going to be using for any specific app. It does it all on its own. And you have the ability to select an option within the settings of the Beacon app that basically tells Beacon, hey, I want you to use your default settings for routing audio through Windows. And if anything tries to alter that, maybe you plug in an additional piece of hardware or maybe something happens within the system and there's some sort of a glitch or an issue, it will always revert any changes back to the default setting that it has down here at the bottom left for me. I think that is a fantastic feature. I haven't had to mess with Windows routing at all since I started using the Beacon app to manage all the audio for my streams. Now, this isn't so much of a pro as it is more of a comparison, but with Elgato Wavelink, you can manage up to nine inputs. With the Beacon app, you're able to manage up to eight inputs instead of nine. So you're able to use one input less than you could with Wavelink, but I still feel like eight is quite a bit. So if you need more than eight, um, I've got questions for you. I'm just curious what it is that you're doing at that point, but not a judgment, just legitimately. I would be curious as to how many sources and why. The next pro that I want you to take a look at here with the Beacon app is something that is very unique to Beacon 
and I've not seen anyone else do this now. So if you notice down here under applications, remember we don't have to go into Windows to reroute anything anymore because what you can do with the Beacon app is you can simply click, drag and drop and assign. Now it's gonna go back because I have it set up to where it manages all the defaults on its own and it decides where things should go uh, kind of on its own. But if I didn't have that option selected, I could click, drag and drop and assign NVIDIA broadcast audio to my system. Or maybe I wanna assign it to game. Maybe I wanna assign OBS to the chat volume knob, right? It would do that. As a matter of fact, look at that, it stayed right there. So now if I wanna control the volume levels for OBS, I would simply have to adjust my chat knob over here. I think that's fantastic. I think, again, it takes a lot of guesswork out of the equation and it makes things so simple and so easy. Another fantastic pro with the Beacon app is the routing table that it has down here and more specifically, the inclusion of the ever missing VOD track from the Wavelink software. So if you recall, I had said how with the lack of a VOD track in Wavelink, if you were running music into your streams, it would get saved automatically to the VOD because there's no way to tell Wavelink to not do that. With Beacon's app, you can tell it, hey, I don't want music in my VOD track, but I want my audience to hear music and I wanna be able to hear music right here. By clicking this and removing it from the VOD track, that means that by the time you're done streaming and your VOD is saved to Twitch, it's gonna have all these other inputs right here, except for your copywritten music. Finally, in the last pro we're gonna talk about with the Beacon app today, unlike Wavelink where you cannot save your profile, you can do that here with the Beacon app. You simply go here to default profile. You can right click, you can save it, you can rename it, you can delete it, and you can duplicate it. So I've had instances where the program has crashed in the past in a prior version of the app build, right? And all of my settings were, uh, you know, gone. They were gone, absolutely gone, 100%. And after this update that happened maybe a few, about a month or two ago, haven't had any crashes or anything since, but I've also been able to consistently save my profile at any time that my computer has crashed for other reasons, okay? I launched the app, reload the profile, and boom, all of my settings are still there. I think that's fantastic for very obvious reasons. Now, let's go into the cons. In regards to cons with Beacon's Beacon app, uh, the first one I wanna talk about is something that is, it, it could be potentially deal-breaking for many of you out there. So, in the prior build for this application, I had a numerous amount of problems. The, the program would freeze, it would crash, it would not save any of my settings. And that's a pain in the ass because imagine having to equalize the microphone, set all the noise suppression and expander settings and the compression, and everything else, and you got it set up the way you want it to, but then the app freezes, it crashes, and all your settings are gone, and you have to restart again from scratch. Happened to me way more than I would like to admit. Thankfully, now the application has been updated and I have not had any issues of that nature since the update. But the reason I'm putting this down as a con is because one thing that I've still yet to verify through other reviewers and other people that I know that use this uh, microphone and the setup and the mix create and the beacon app is that the application is known to behave very differently from one PC build to another. So I can't 100% guarantee in good faith that this will work for you flawlessly because your PC build may be very, very different from mine. Or maybe there might just be some minor differences, but those minor differences might be enough to cause some issues while using the app. My recommendation here is that if you decide to go with any of the Beacon products and the app, just make sure that there's a pretty solid return policy that's gonna be able to work in your favor as opposed to not just so that you're not up a creek without a paddle but again since the update i've had literally zero stability issues with the software so i hope that helps in that regard let's move on last but not least ladies and gents one of the biggest cons that i see with the beacon app that from what i'm hearing they're going to be updating to add this functionality soon is that it has no vst support whatsoever at all right now i'm running my sure sm7b via the Wave XLR, I have VSTs running through Wavelink and I've added Wavelink Stream as the microphone input in Beacon Nap to kind of circumvent that. But maybe you don't have a Wavelink enabled product in your setup, you wouldn't be able to do that. So until Beacon adds VST support to be able to use for any microphone, it's gonna be a pretty big con. And I think it should be a very important factor in the decision that you're about to make. Uh, because the cool thing is, is that the Beacon mic itself 
has a fantastic suite of options to really customize and get the sound that you want to get out of it. It's it seriously like the Beacon Mics options and, and, and customizability is fantastic. If they can do that by adding VST support to where you can do the same exact things for other microphones or, or hear me out here, if they allow any microphone to use the same exact options that the Beacon Mic gets, that is a freaking win. If they do that, that is a freaking win because I'm telling you like, Working with the Beacon mic and get it the, getting that thing set up to how I wanted to sound using all the bells and whistles that it had, far better results than using VST plugins, in my opinion. That about wraps up the cons for the Beacon app. Now, let's go ahead and close this out. You might have been on the fence between buying an Elgato Wave product like the Wave 1, the Wave 3, the Wave XLR, along with the Wave DX microphone, or you may have been considering purchasing the Beacon microphone, or maybe you've been thinking about buying the Beacon Mix or the Beacon Mix Create to manage your audio. You're, you're watching this video because you either don't know what microphone to get, or if you want to buy an additional piece of hardware to really manage your audio levels. And I think the bigger question behind that first question would have to be, what software will work best for you? And I'm going to tell you that I've had ample amount of time using both Wavelink and the Beacon app. And when it comes to just how easy it is to on the fly adjust my levels, how easy it is to navigate across the different inputs, how easy it is to dictate what gets heard on stream and what doesn't and what doesn't get on my VODs, for me, the clear absolute winner will be the Beacon app. The Beacon app is absolutely fantastic nowadays. With this update that recently launched, all the stability issues are gone. I've had an absolute joyous time using this piece of software, especially when you have it used through the Beacon Mix Create. The Beacon Mix Create, as I've said before in other content or on social media, the Beacon Mix Create is literally my favorite and most important piece of hardware that I have in my entire setup right now. Because there's something funny about pushing a button to adjust my volume levels. But then when you just turn that sweet dial, it just feels so right. You just, it gives you a feeling of control that pushing a button never ever will. Um, so if you don't wanna get the Beacon mic because it comes in at a pretty premium price, but you want to be able to take advantage of the Beacon app, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get the Beacon Mix Create. There's nothing wrong with the Elgato hardware and the software by any means. There's a couple of features that that's missing that I think kind of hurt it a little bit. And there's a couple of features missing with the Beacon app that hurt it as well. But when I think about it in terms of the software that's managing my audio and the hardware that I have that I can use to execute those functions, Beacon and the Beacon Mix create clear winners any day that ends in Y twice on Sunday. Hope y'all found the video helpful. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. If you have any additional questions or if there's anything else that I can explain in further detail, let me know and I'll get back to you. Until then, y'all be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. Peace out. I hear, I'm hearing all sorts of noises, man. You know, like this. I'm, I, I bought the game because it's great, but I knew that I was what I was getting into. I, I shouldn't feel like.